If y'all are new to the channel, y'all would probably think this is the first time that I gave or into Barack Obama into the Bed Bucking Hall of Shame. But if you have been around my channel for the last few years, you would know this is the second time that he's entered into the Bed Bucking Hall of Shame. The first time being when he tried to pitch to black people that if we didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, that would be the ending of his legacy or something to that effect. It was something ridiculous. It was a few years ago when he said it. But now, here we are again, and he's entered back in for a second time. Why? Because he decided that he was going to do the same exact thing that Magic Johnson did a couple days before him. Now, y'all already saw the bed bucking entry that I did on Magic Johnson and what he said as it pertains to black men and Kamala Harris. Well, now here we are a couple days later, and now I'm entering in the form of President Barack Obama for basically the same exact thing. I'm like, do y'all not see a pattern here? I mean, it's something we've seen over the years. They love to say that they want that they want to do things for the black community or black men and this, that, and the third. But if we say that, no, we're not going to go your way because you're not doing this, that, and the third or meeting our demands, then here come the fangs. This is why I tell you, both parties are exactly and operate exactly the same. The tone is just different. But let them talk long enough and they will show you who they really are. So Barack Obama decided he was going to go to this rally or whatever it is and berate black men into basically saying it's not acceptable if we were to merely sit out of the election. But also he was saying along the lines of if black men voted for Trump, that that would be bad as well. Like I said, you have people out here that keep trying to tone police whatever it is that we do, but didn't do anything for us while they were in office. And we're looking at you, 44. So let's go ahead and get into it. Former President Barack Obama on Thursday admonished black men who are hesitating to back Vice President Kamala Harris's presidential campaign, telling them it's not acceptable to sit out this election and suggesting they might be reluctant to vote for Harris because she's a woman. See, that's the stuff that I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with her being a woman. It's her policy. It's her history It's what we already know about her that we don't agree with but they keep linking it to oh she's a woman that has nothing to do with it further doing that whole gender thing they love to push that as well because magic johnson kind of tried to do the same thing and they always do that because that's the low-hanging fruit oh let's just say they're not going to vote for her because she's a woman that has nothing to do with it absolutely nothing to do with it but they keep telling themselves that because that's the e that's the easy go to to go after with black men because they know they see when they, that's why I keep telling people I don't like those gender warring things because they'll use that as a weapon against us on a bigger stage bigger than YouTube or any platform where the quote unquote gender war thrives at. And they'll take it more on a bigger scale, such as a political one, which they're trying to do right here. The striking comments by Obama made, a, made to a small group of voters in a surprise stop at a local Harris campaign office in Pittsburgh were part of a more forceful campaign message delivered by the former president on Thursday as polls continue to show a neck and neck race. At a rally in the city later that evening, Obama issued some of his most searing public criticisms of his successor to date. The lack of energy some see around Harris's campaign, Obama first told the smaller group, seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. You're thinking about sitting out or supporting somebody in former President Donald Trump who has a history of de denigrating you because you think that's a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down, Obama said, that's not acceptable. And Obama, what did you do for black people, I ask? As a collective, what did you do? Because that's a question that many black people have been asking and wondering ever since he got out of office back in 2016. Well, officially 2017. That's that's what many people we saw. We saw what you did for everyone else, especially the Academy. That was that was a huge move by him right before he got out. But as for black people, what did he do? See, I'm I'm out of the trance. When I was 18 and was able to vote for the first time, I was in that trance like everybody else. And I went to an HBCU. We all were. But we're grown now. We see we see it for what it is. What did he do for us to 
just say we're just gonna go vote for her because she's a woman so that's the angle that you're going with now because apparently black men don't support women and don't come at me with the oh she's a black woman she's not that's what they're really trying to say oh this is black men yet again not supporting black women that's the notion that that's where they're headed with it. that's what he's trying to do that's what he's going with because she's a woman not because of her policies but because she's a woman He goes on to say, the problem he suggested was less complicated than some are making it out to be, and that it often comes down to sexism. You're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses I've got a problem with that, Obama said, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of a woman as president, and you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Now, notice he did not do the whole thing, oh, because she's a woman when it came to Hillary Clinton. Because Hillary Clinton, as we all know, is a white woman. But they keep parroting that Kam Kamala Harris is black. So now he's coming at black men with the, oh, because she's a woman. Again, going back to what I was saying about the whole gender war thing. And they know that's how they try to get black people is with the whole black man versus black woman thing. But the thing is, Kamala Harris is not black but they keep parroting her as if she is again the people the reason people aren't voting for her isn't because she's a woman well not at least not for me if this woman came with the right policies and met our demands she would get my vote it has nothing to do with her being a woman it's because of her lack of policy specifically for black americans her words she wasn't going to do anything specific for black people or something along those lines. She said it. We all heard it. Or at least I think we all heard it. She said it back at the top of 2020. He goes on to say that. As CNN reported. Harris had been focused on turning out black men. Even before she took over as a Democratic nominee. Trying to get the enthusiasm there for President Joe Biden. The concern is that the couch is going to win. One person close to the Harris team told CNN. See, that, that lets you know they're listening to us. Because they because who talks about the couch? We do. We need to make sure that black men, Hispanic men. There you go. I thought you were talking to black men, but now you're talking. Now you're doing the black and brown thing again. Another reason why we, we are, are taking a back seat because you keep lumping us in with this group for whatever reason we can never stand alone we always have to be lumped in with them and that's another reason we back away because at the end of the day let's say we stood quote unquote side by side with them we already know they're going to get most of the benefit we've seen it time and time again i just did a video the other day maybe a couple weeks ago now by the time y'all see this video about them trying to do a so-called black American, Asian American coalition to try to help this woman win or link to whatever nonsense they said. That didn't make no sense. They says black men, Hispanic men don't sit on the couch because if they don't vote at all, that's a vote for him. And that's another thing I hate when they do, when they say if you don't vote for this person, that's a vote for him. No, that just means it's no vote. That's really all it is. That doesn't mean it's a vote for him. I don't I never understood that logic. It's very lopsided. And they are the, and now I will say this. As far as I know, the Democrats are the only ones that peddle that nonsense. If you don't vote at all, that's a vote for him. No, if you don't vote at all, that's just a no vote. Period. Harris will travel to Detroit next week for a Tuesday radio town hall vote posted by nationally syndicated radio co-host Charlemagne the God, who announced the plan on Friday morning. He has millions of followers across digital platforms and The Breakfast Club enjoys a vast nationwide audience, much of it being black. During the hour-long conversation slated for 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Harris will take questions from callers across the battleground states and estimated 139 radio stations and markets across the country and will take the program in addition to multiple digital streams and the iHeartRadio app. I can almost imagine how ridiculous that conversation is probably going to go. As Harris's campaign works to recreate in short order, the multiracial Biden coalition of 2020 campaign operatives and allies have been offering a similar directive to the one Obama delivered in 
Pittsburgh, often privately working to make the case to voters in close-up intimate spaces. Last month in Milwaukee, Harris's brother-in-law, Anthony West, quietly attended a local meeting of the NAACP, technically nonpartisan group whose members are filled with influential, mostly Democratic state activists and organizers. In a recording of the meeting obtained by CNN, he made it the case for Harris in strong terms. Remember, you were raised by a strong black woman. Here we go. Now, this is comments coming from Kamala's brother-in-law, who's married to her sister. He says, remember, you were raised by a strong black woman. I was actually raised by two, a strong black woman and a strong black man. Uh, a strong black woman took care of you, fed you, gave you the opportunity in life. West told the NAACP audience, urging those in attendance to take the message home. So what does what what does being raised by a strong black woman have to do with voting? See what I mean? This is this is exactly why a lot of black people don't be rocking with the Democrats like that because of this. What does that have to do with voting? Nothing. It's a lot of people out there who are of other groups that are raised by strong black. I mean, strong whoever insert ethnic group there and they're not going out there to vote or vote for 45. So what does that mean? We we are the only ones that get this quote unquote talking down to. Who cares if you was raised by who you was raised by? How is that supposed to look at my role view? I wasn't raised by Kamala Harris. She wasn't my mother. So I'm is man, let me continue. At the rally, Obama delivered his most personal furious indictment yet of Trump and a Republican party he said in is enthralled to a toxic character who lies about storm relief over the last week marked a deep violation of American trust. The idea of intentionally trying to deceive people in their most desperate, vulnerable moments. My question is, when did that become OK? Obama said, pointing to Trump's lies about the federal government, withholding assistance to hard hit Republican areas or siphoning off aid to give to undocumented immigrants. When a cheer rose up, he sharply quieted the room. I'm not looking for applause right now, I call BS. Obama said his voice vibrating with emotion. Before he asked Republicans and conservatives allied with Trump, when did that become okay? Why would we go along with that? Obama drew sharp contrast on policy and character, ripping Trump and talking up Harris on both fronts, and cast his successor as the mascot for a dangerous and increasingly nasty version of the country. Obama in the past campaigns has relished mocking and criticizing Trump, but his speech and delivery on Thursday were stinging and unusually visceral. If you had a family member who acted like Trump, you might still love them, but you tell them you got a problem and wouldn't put him in charge of anything. And yet when Donald Trump lies or cheats or shows utter disregard for our constitution, when he calls POWs losers or prisoners of war losers or fellow citizens vermin, people make excuses for it. Turning his attention to voters who have expressed concern about Trump's potential return to the White House and others who might not be paying close attention to the campaign, Obama issued a blunt call to action. Whether this election makes you feel excited or scared or hopeful or frustrated or anything in between, do not just sit back and hope for the best. Get off of your couch, I will not, and vote. Put down your phone and vote. Grab your friends and family and vote, Obama said. Vote for Kamala Harris. Obama also sought to push back against an argument that has been the core of Trump's campaign that he represents a departure from the status quo. I get it why people are looking to shake things up. I mean, I am the hopey changey guy. We know. I understand people feeling frustrated and feeling we can do better. What I cannot understand is why anybody would think that Donald Trump will shake things up in a way that is good for you. Throughout his speech, Obama described Trump as uniquely greedy and duplicitous. And that's pretty much it. Like, it's pretty much like other things in there, but it goes off of the beaten path. Listen, the point of the matter is Obama does not speak for black men. Magic Johnson doesn't speak for black men. If you are a black man, speak for yourself. The black community as a whole, use your own voice and make your own decision when it comes down to it at the end of the day. These guilt trips and these tactics, they don't work on us. All we demanded is reparations and tangibles, ending qualified immunity, and an anti-black hate crime bill. And neither side has done any of that at all.
None. Nothing. They've done it on the benefit for others. But the reason why, again, a lot of people go after the Democrats is because a vast majority of black people are still under that spell to go and vote for them. That's why I can't wait to see what these exit poll numbers are going to look like demographic wise to see how black people voted in this election. If they're down on both sides, that would be a miracle. That means it effectively worked. However, if it's still high on a particular side, then that means that we still got some work to do. But we shall see what happens when November the 5th comes. But I already did my mail-in ballot. I think I spoke about this in a live stream. I did my mail-in ballot. And when I looked at it, I went right to the write-in spaces. Circled right in. And in write in, I wrote cut the check, couch, reparations, tangibles, in qualified immunity, anti-black hate crime bill. Sealed it up and sent it back. That's exactly what it said. That is how I chose to vote in the 2024 election.